You might be familiar with this word, collinear. If I gave you a set of random three points, and it turns out that you're able to draw a perfectly straight line connecting all three points, then these three points are what we call collinear. They lie on the same line. Now you can't guarantee this with all sets of three points. So for instance, if I gave you something like this, then okay, this is obviously not collinear. You can't draw a perfectly straight line connecting all three of them. So I can't, you know, I can't just do this and say, oh, it's collinear. This doesn't count. <laughs> However, there are cases in which it might be less obvious. For instance, if I gave something like this, then okay, well, they look collinear, it looks okay. However, what if this point is just 0.000001 unit away from being collinear? You can't tell that by eye. Therefore, you're going to need some rigorous geometric proofs in order to conclude whether they are collinear or not. In this video, I want to present a problem that will demonstrate that. So here is the problem. Consider an arbitrary triangle like this. Now, draw its circumcircle, which is basically the circle which passes through all three vertices of the triangle. Now, we're going to choose a random point on the circumcircle. I'm just going to choose this one. And draw a perpendicular line from this point to each and every one of the sides of the triangle. Extend size as necessary in order to get that perpendicular effect. Now, these points at where the perpendiculars hit the sides of the triangle are called the feet of the perpendiculars. Now here is the question. Are these three feet collinear? Well, you might be able to look at one and maybe, maybe make an educated guess. However, you can't just look at one and formally get an answer. You have to geometrically prove it. So before we do that, we're going to go over some facts that one should know. Firstly, you're probably familiar with this. If I have two lines, two straight lines intersecting like this, and if you consider the opposite angles that are formed, then those opposite angles are equal. So if this is theta, then this is, this is also theta. Now, this would be only true if both of the lines are perfectly straight. So if I had something like this, and then you know this line broke off in the middle, and I had a straight line passing through the point of breaking, then if you were to consider the opposite angles formed, then they would no longer be equal because this line over here is not completely straight. So if it breaks off, the vertical angles or opposite angles are not equal. And this is the idea. If we can show that these opposite angles formed over here are equal, then we have proven that this green line is indeed a fully straight line and thus these three points are collinear. Otherwise, they are not collinear. We also have more facts that we should know, and this is regarding cyclic quadrilaterals. A cyclic quadrilateral is basically any four-sided shape that you can perfectly inscribe or fit in a circle. So this would be a cyclic quadrilateral, four-sided shape. Now, cyclic quadrilaterals have a ton of useful properties. For one, if you take a pair of opposite angles, right, and you know, maybe label them as A and B, then we must have, without any exceptions, A plus B equals 180 degrees. Any pair of opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral must sum up to 180 degrees. And this works in reverse as well. If I gave you a random quadrilateral and you found out that the sum of an opposite pair of angles just happened to add up to 180 degrees, then you can also conclude that this is cyclic. Another useful property about cyclic quadrilaterals is if you took one and then considered its diagonals, right? And then if you took two angles which are inscribed within the same edge, now what I mean by that is if you consider this angle over here, notice that this is formed by this edge over here and then two other edges coming out of that same edge, right? This is how the angle is formed. Similarly, this angle is formed by this edge and then two other edges coming out of that same edge. And since both of these angles come from this edge, they are both inscribed within the same edge. So if you took two such angles and you found that 
their angle measures just happen to be the same, then you must conclude that it is a cyclic quadrilateral. All right. And it also works in reverse. If you took some random quadrilateral and found that this was true, you must also conclude it's cyclic. So now that we have gotten these properties out of the way, we can begin our solution to this problem. First off, let's label a few points because it's going to be hard to follow the solution without naming the points. Call the vertices of the triangle A, B, and C. We're going to call the feet D, E, F. And we're going to call this point on the circumcircle point P. Now, we're going to start by connecting C and P together with a straight line. Now, consider this. What is angle CFP? It's just 90 degrees, right? Because this is 90 degrees and CB, CFB is a straight line. Similarly, CEA is a straight line and this is 90 degrees. So this other angle here must also be 90 degrees. Now, what's so cool about this? Well, notice that these two 90 degrees, obviously the same measure, therefore, are both inscribed within edge CP. Thus, by this property over here, we must conclude that quadrilateral CFEP is cyclic. Furthermore, consider this. Let's connect P and A together like that. Now, notice that quadrilateral APCB literally is cyclic. All four of its vertices are on a circle already. Furthermore, consider quadrilateral ADPE. Notice that this is a right angle and the opposite is also a right angle. Well, by this property, they sum up to 180 degrees and thus they are cyclic. So do we have more? Well, consider quadrilateral BDPF. Notice that this is a 90 degree angle and this is a 90 degree angle. Again, that's cyclic. So now we're going to move on with the solution. We're going to label this angle x okay this angle over here x and now we're going to label these four angles here we're going to label this angle here at the top right top right to be theta okay maybe i should write that a little bit better <laughs> and we're going to label this angle here phi phi is a greek letter commonly used for labeling angles like theta we're going to label this beta another greek letter <laughs> And this angle, we're also going to label alpha, another Greek letter. <laughs> okay, so what's so cool about labeling these angles specifically? Well, notice that because quadrilateral ABCP is cyclic, or I wrote APCB, <laughs> but anyways, this quadrilateral here is cyclic. Notice that by this property, we have this angle, right? a p c which is equal to alpha plus beta plus phi this added with the opposite angle x must equal to 180 degrees right so we can move x over to obtain that this is equal to 180 degrees minus x furthermore in cyclic quadrilateral how did i write it in cyclic quadrilateral b d p f right we have this angle, which is equal to DPF. So that's beta plus B plus beta. This over here plus X should also be 180 degrees. So therefore we can actually write beta plus phi plus theta is equal to 180 degrees minus X. They're both equal to the same things, right? And therefore, take a look at this. If they're both equal to the same things, then okay, well, phi is obviously equal to phi. And we also have beta is obviously equal to beta. Thus, we must have alpha equals to theta, right? That must be true then. So therefore, we can actually replace this alpha over here with theta because it's literally equal with theta we just showed. Okay, that's great. Now, what's next? Well, notice that because ADPE is a cyclic quadrilateral, and notice that because theta, you know, is inscribed within length or edge ad and this angle is also inscribed within edge ad and it's cyclic so this angle over here this is just theta as well now notice cyclic quadrilateral c f e p notice that theta is inscribed within cf 
And also, this angle here is also inscribed within CF. Thus, this is also theta. But wait a minute, we're done. Notice that the opposite angles are both equal to theta. Thus, this green line over here connecting the three feet must be a perfectly straight line. Thus, we conclude that FED, the three feet, are indeed collinear. And that's it. Thank you for watching. If you found this interesting, then please do consider subscribing.